Thank you so much for being here, all of you. And um, it's my first time to be in Hack Soho. Um, anyone has been here before? No. Seems a lot of regulars, perfect. Uh, my name is Mohammed Chahat, or Mo in short, like Mo Salah if, you, if you're in football. And uh, I work for Venify, it's an, um, um, a multinational company working mainly with um, machine identities and workload identities and so forth. But I mean, recently they acquired Jetstack, which is London based. Kubernetes and cloud native consulting company that has been around the scene for a while. Um, and I'm not going to talk about any products today. I'm mainly going to talk about some of the work we're doing in the open source community around uh, machine identities, workload identities, and, and, and some sort of um, security related um, topics in that sense. Um, anyone here um, has some experience with Kubernetes, for example? Yep. Perfect, a few. Um, containerization, generally speaking, even Docker and on, okay, on-prem, on cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud as in public cloud and on-prem, yeah, very common. I think, I mean, that's the world we're living in, in a way, um, and that's what I'm going to try to explore a few things that is happening in, um, in the community around, around this piece of work. So hopefully you find that useful. Um, what is the background of people like in terms of roles? Is it more security related? Most of InfoSec, cyber ops? Yeah. Product. Product. And focus on like infra security related or no, generally speaking? Just uh, general like, platform engineering. Brilliant. Platform engineering. Perfect. Any other roles? Perfect. So I'm going to be the newbie here. I mean, this is a new domain for me. But I mean, I have a lot of expertise in application design and architecture, and then also platform engineering. I worked prior in Pivotal, so I worked a lot with Cloud Foundry and the likes and Cloud Native build packs and, and all sorts of things. And then I worked with VMware Tunzo for a while, so done a lot of container-based platforms um, and developer platforms based on that. And security is always like really big from that sense. And that's why I wanted to invest some time into adding the dimension to my portfolio. The, the title is a little bit um, long, but basically what we're trying to do here is like, we're trying to explore how can we um, manage workload identities on the level of applications across um, heterogeneous environments. So not only one cloud platform or on-prem platform, across platforms, ac across um, maybe deployment models as well, whether that's serverless or function as a service or on a VM or so forth. It might be an application, it might be a database, it might be a message broker. Um, it's, it's early work, but I mean, it's getting adoption and it's a problem space that is very interesting. I'm also gonna talk about another project um, that is helping managing identities within the open source community for Kubernetes, which is called Cert Manager. So if you're in platform engineering usually and you're doing Kubernetes, um, you probably worked with Cert Manager before. Anyone touched Cert Manager in a way? Yeah, so maybe a couple of people have touched that. So I'm gonna try to link some dots and give you some stuff to play with um, when you get home. I had a demo. I made sure it's broken before I came here. <laughs> I tried to fix it, but it's not fixed. But I mean, uh, we're, we're, I'm gonna point you at least to the repo and then you can, you can maybe get it working at some point. So the idea really is like when you think about people who are accessing the network or like things that is accessing the network. It's always people and machines, right? And people or user access has been being solved for a while. A lot of money has been invested. It's kind of, there are new things coming in like two-factor authentication, pass keys, and a lot of other things coming along. But I mean, people access management is kind of stable, like it's been solved. But I mean, when we come to machines, um, we see a lot of, you can see like, perhaps over the last 15 years, um, people are not increasing in a way in terms of users. But I mean, when you think about devices, machines in terms of devices with the mobile devices, iPads, um, things like even servers, virtual machines on the cloud, these are all devices that is coming along, maybe firewalls, network devices, load balancers and, and, and the likes. But then when you come to that um, algor logarithmically, you will find that applications or workloads moving objects, especially with the trending cloud-native applications, microservices, a lot of moving pieces, again, whether on cloud or on-prem, 
um, that's really massive in terms of the growth. Um, and the growth here, we're talking about um, in billions. That's the projections, if not already really in the billions. And that's what we're referring to was machines in this case. It's all like devices as well as applications in this case. People focused on some devices in the past, but I mean, they started moving on to the application unit because a lot of that becoming ephemeral as well. It goes and back and so forth. And more machines means we need, there are more connections, there are more automation required and so forth. And if you think about it traditionally, people use network um, on the network level, basically segmentation or micro segmentation, firewall based um, access control, right? But I mean, that's not really helping anymore in, in that sense. And that's why it's disappearing. Uh, maybe that was helpful at some point, but I mean, with zero trust architectures, multi-cloud, I mean, out, outside the perimeter and the network perimeter, it became um, a wider problem to solve, if you agree. And then when we come to machine identities, there are a lot of types as well. There might be TLS certificates, there might be job tokens, there might be um, keys, there might be IoT certificates. There are like a lot of things in, in the industry as well in terms of types. So what we're trying to define today in terms of the, an approach to solve this problem is defining a workload identity and really here um, elevating our focus to um, an application level or a workload level. Why? Because only devices, only network zones is not enough anymore um, in that sense. And as part of exploring an approach to solve that, people have came up with maybe some designs or design principles um, to try and, and solve that. And the very first thing is like every workload should be issued um, an identity automatically as it comes online and just by existing. Why? Because if you need also a secret or a key or a certificate to identify yourself, then it becomes, okay, where I can keep the key, where I can keep the secret, where I can keep the credential. And then there is a, a famous problem called the bottom problem, uh, bottom turtle problem, right? Which is which turtle, like basically how many layers we're gonna go to try and solve the problem of an, a workload identity or an object identity, correct? And that's why w when they try to to um, raise a principle here to try and solve the problem, he said like automatically just by existing. It's not, you don't have to have a token or a, or a key or a secret or a credential to try and, and define that. And it needs to be uh, represented also by verifiable or attestable documents, right? Think certificates, think, think any infrastructure that is already there, like a JOT token and so forth. But we need to make sure this is verifiable. If this workload is saying I'm workload A, it needs to be verified and be able to be verified within an ecosystem, especially in a heterogeneous environment, not only within one platform or, or environment. And, and workloads don't need to do anything to get their identity. So this is all about how can they obtain identity just by existing. And that's basically the few things they defined as they were trying to, come to, to solve the problem. So the motivation of all of this work, if you think about it, it's really trying to define a standard model to see how we can issue and maybe renew and sign and verify and attest um, identities for workloads across um, clusters here, but I mean, it's really across environments. It's anywhere in that case, so that we can create trust um, in a way that is policy managed, because if it's not policy managed, then we will come to a problem of also how can we manage these identities, if you will. So that raised some questions, raised some questions. Things like, how can every workload have a unique identity? Back in the days, it was all about a VLAN, a machine, and so forth, and this workload existed, and that's how we used the IPs, perhaps, platform like hosts, um, IPs, um, and so forth, to try and, and control that. That was really the classic model of, of network segmentation or firewall or micro segmentation, even like east and west traffic on, on some networks. Second one is how can we do, how can we also have, um, how can we have verif verifications and verifiable documents across all the, across all the state? Um, and that might be, because that's what I'm gonna focus on today, using an existing infrastructure. If you want adoption, probably you want to leverage existing constructs. So in this case, PKI or TLS certificates will come really massively in the picture here. How can we also make sure that the identity is compliant to some policies? 
every organization have some policies in terms of how they do PKI or TLS certificates or um, which certificate authorities you need to do for. And usually when you go to cloud, you probably have multiple infrastructures. You might have on-prem infrastructure rather than um, that is different to the public cloud infrastructure and so forth. And that's why we talk about heterogeneous environments and trust domains and so forth, right? And then when you do that and issue and um, verify identities, how you can also distribute this trust across your estate because distribution itself is also another uh, problem as you're trying to solve the main problem. So the main solution today, or like one of the two things I'm discussing today is Spiffy. And Spiffy is an abbreviation for Secure Production Identity Framework for everyone. And I think for everyone here was just like for them to be able to find the domain. But basically it's all about, yeah, that was the driver. But the thing here is like Spiffy is really trying to give a standard way, an approach to, manage, to issue and distribute workload identities across these environments, um, mainly on a workload level, because that's the object that is being traded nowadays. It's not a machine, it's not a VLAN, it's not a, um, a network zone. Micro segmentation is not helping solving this problem anymore in a way. And you can see there are a lot of like implementations or adoption from multiple providers in the, so things like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud are all understanding Spiffy and trying to integrate it. And people who know AWS or Azure or Jiki, these are synonymous to service accounts. But if you have an IAM role on AWS, that would only work within, AI, within AWS. If you have a service account on Google, it would only work on Google. And that's a major problem because nowadays you probably have a lot of like as we said, um, interactivity or interoperability problems between these clouds. And one of them is the workload identity in that case. Make sense? Um, so how can they also authenticate mutually in a reliable way? And Spiffy is actually a graduated project within CNCF. So it is actually a stable project uh, or a framework in fact. And there is an implementation that I'm not going to touch upon much today. Spiffy is the framework is kind of the spec, and there is an implementation called Spire. How they are implemented, this is a reference implementation. Okay, how, how they provide these agents, how they provide this, what it would look like from an infrastructure perspective to support that, support that um, framework. So I'm gonna try to highlight quickly for people who know Spiffy, who has worked with Spiffy before, at the read. So I'm gonna go quickly on the fundamentals of Spiffy. And if you think about access control, it's about who and what always, right? Who can do what? That's exactly what you're trying to, to do. And in this case, we're talking about uh, machines. And then when you talk about the who and the what, then that's the policy. You define a policy, correct? And then when you want to describe the policy, usually you need a username, you need an identity. And if you think about that, that's the very first thing that Spiffy identified. It's like um, a Spiffy ID, as they call. And the very nice thing about this thing, and I had like a very um, simple one today, um, you can see you can have all the taxo taxonomies or namespaces as you wish. So you can uniquely identify every workload anywhere. You can have multiple organizations, you can have multiple environments, you can have multiple topologies, you can have departments, you can have teams, you can have application domains. Like the taxonomy, really, in terms of design and namespaces can give you all what you need. In this case, I've tried to highlight, for example, today's IO Active and then Hack Soho, for instance. And then you can think about any other things. Hack Soho drinks, Hack Soho pizza, and so forth, if that makes sense. Okay, but then we need this identity or username to be verified. And this is where we come to the, um, another metadata, which is um, what they call ESVED or a spiffy verifiable identifier document, okay? This is basically your certificate, basically that's your attestation that this is who you are as a machine or a workload in this case. And you need to attest it or verify it using an authority. An authority here, it can be anything, but I mean, if I'm alluding to PKI infrastructures as a very good candidate for that, then this is exactly like any other certificates that you're managing, but I mean another format, right? So ISVED is a document, and then you need, as we said, we need things to be automated. Things are ephemeral nowadays, right? So things go and come back. Nodes, as in VMs, workloads themselves in containers or, or as a function, go and um, like get deployed and run and then scale and scale down and so forth. Um, and in this case, you need to have a way 
to obtain this document, this SVED, correct? And part of the spec is actually a workload API that you need to provide from your infrastructure perspective for them to obtain these things. And actually what it does is actually it obtain the ISVET, it provides these ISVETs for all the workloads. And all the workloads, in this case, does not need anything, does not need to provide any secrets or credentials to do it. It's the environment that is providing all its metadata as context, and then accordingly we try and trust that. And there is an element of trust, um, trust chain that is happening there, right? So where it's running, on which node, on which hardware, and then it goes, and that's part of the infrastructure that needs to be obtained there. And there are a lot of use cases for Spiffy. So things like microservices communication and all the mutual TLS um, communication amongst them. Um, things like connecting to databases or message brokers without having to obtain credentials, have them in a secret store, and then the secret store needs a credential, and this credential, where would you like to um, where would you um, secure it? Um, people go to HSMs, okay, but now HSMs are managed and they're becoming also a legacy from a hardware perspective um, in terms of scaling them or keeping them up to date and so forth. And you can see what they call the bottom third problem. So how can we connect to databases or consume services, generally speaking, using Spiffy um, uh, ecosystem in this case? Things like uh, building service meshes across estates and domains, correct? Things like cross-service uh, authentication for zero-trust security models. Again, think about that quite a lot, especially across domains and across boundaries. Um, especially when we come to containers, which is a massive um, uh, deployment model from an adoption perspective, whether on public cloud or on, I mean, everybody has Red Hat OpenShift. If you're an organization, if you're a startup or a scale-up, you probably have some Kubernetes done somewhere or even running um, containers using a platform as a service or something, right? So how can you also chain and federate services and have an interoperability between them when they're running this in these container environments, maybe other services that are running in VMs? That's typical, right? You see these things every day, day in and day out. So these are all use cases that Spiffy can help with um, and facilitate in this case. So what I'm gonna go do again now is walk you through every major um, construct from Spiffy spec perspective, just for you to walk away with some good understanding, similar to what we discussed, like who, the what, and mainly Spiffy is focusing on the who. It's focusing on solving the problem of identity. Enforcing access control is easy, or like a problem space for another project. Uh, another spec from that case, is that me? Perfect. So the very first thing in Spiffy specification is the workload, and that can be any software component, as we said. It can be a workload, it can be a machine, it can be a device, and so forth. Spiffy ID, that's kind of a username, but for a workload. That's what we discussed earlier. And as we said, that's a URI, it's very, um, it can be unique, because it needs to be unique, and that's why you have a taxonomy to design and, and then adopt, abide to, um, as we said. And actually, it also entails like the trust domain. So what is the trust domain that I have? Um, similar to sub, like intermediate CAs, for example, in some organizations and so forth. Is it the team? Is it the department? Is it an organization? Uh, what boundary exactly? Maybe a topology like on-prem data center and another data center or another public cloud um, uh, tenant, for instance. It might be multi-tenants on cloud, different accounts. So think about trust domains as like, what is the trust? Um, domain that you have, and then how can you um, move trust amongst them? ISVED is the verifiable document, is at the station, and that's cryptographically verifiable document, basically. Um, there are many um, styles or types of this ISVED document. It can be a TLS document, um, a TLS certificate, which is an X509, which is the most common use, but I mean JOTS as well, JSON web tokens, are also a common, commonly used in this case. Workload API, um, basically if you have, uh, workload API is basically, um, what is the API that I'm going to obtain my ISVETs from? Correct, I mean, how can I get um, a document to prove that I am this username, right? And then trust bundle, if you're using X509, you need to, to use trust bundles. Everybody knows trust bundles, right? So basically this is how you can have the trust bundles so that you can also distribute them. 
And basically, this is what we will come to as well um, using the other project. Cool. So to recap, Spiffy ID is an identity namespace. Um, it can be unique. It's flexible in terms of how to do that. SVED is your attestation, is your certificate that, uh, that proves um, who you are and who you claim you are as a workload. And then workload API is basically, this is the core of the framework in terms of realization um, and in terms of how can you obtain automatically without having to intervene from a human perspective. And that's really key because of the scale um, in this case. So these are the three main things that Spiffy provides and, so, and that's the approach to solving the problem we've identified earlier or framed earlier. So shifting gears. Now that Spiffy can be used on anything, what I'm going to try and, and highlight here is one of the use cases we're seeing a lot nowadays, which is Kubernetes and mainly deployments on Kubernetes, maybe also Kubernetes interoperating with other services that exist elsewhere, like databases or a Kafka broker on a VM. That's very common, right? So you have some service on Kubernetes and then it's consuming other services as well. And I mean, no one denies that Kubernetes is getting adoption. So basically that's the statistics is trying to discuss here. And even organizations that are actually um, adopting, um, adopting Kubernetes, the growth of number of clusters is increasing every year. So it's never one cluster. It's always like sometimes in the hundreds of scale because you have non-production, you have production, you have branch um, branches, for example, or feature branches. Uh, clusters and it's all provision and deprovision, provision and deprovision is kill out and is kill in, which makes always these problems for any security um, related topics uh, much harder. And personally, I've seen a lot of challenges in adopting these technologies in organization just because of the conversations that is being had with security or the conversation that is not being had. And everybody is trying to avoid having this conversation. Right, or maybe like the provisioning vault or provisioning some CA and doing self-signed um, certificate. That's very common, correct? You see that? Yeah? So that's the thing. So even whether the adoption of Kubernetes itself is, is, is gaining traction even more, and then organizations who have adopted it also from a number of clusters perspective is increasing. So come here to Kubernetes an identity manager project, basically, which is Cert Manager. So people who are trying to um, generate and issue certificates and then manage the renewals in such a dynamic environment were struggling at the beginning, right? Because you had to go to an existing PKI or CA internally, you had to submit a CSR and wait on email for people to get it from DigiCert or Intrust, email it to you. That's, that's the typical thing. But I mean, in these environments, people want to define everything as code. Right? And they just won't like to, I want to forget about it. And especially if you have multi microservices, so it's more objects and components you're, you're provisioning and, and deploying. Um, if you want to do mutual TLS, if you want to do HTTPS from an ingress perspective on every rather than using wildcards, um, there are a lot of challenges that actually quite slow down people adopting these technologies while the whole promise is actually to be faster, right? So, and that's why Cert Manager existed. And this project is pretty, it's the only project actually in the, in the industry um, from a Kubernetes perspective that is solving this problem, issuing TLS certificates and renewing them against multiple issuers. It might be Let's Encrypt, it might be um, Cloudflare or, um, or AWS, or like all of these guys have CAs now or an internal PKI infrastructure. So basically it can also connect to existing PKI internal CAs basically. Everybody following? Yeah. So it has over 10,000 um, GitHub stars. It's um, an incubating CNCF project. So it's very widely adopted. It's distributed by every major Kubernetes vendor as well. So in this occasion, in this context, what Cert Manager is helping us with it can, it can very well give us and help us issue certificates uh, and X509 certificates in an automatic way. So why not use it to have ISVIDs or verifiable documents in a spiffy environment? You know what's really good about that? In every single case that you needed to interact in an environment prior to this um, feature, what you needed to do is like to have some sort of credential. 
it might be um, um, a cert or a, a key as well to, to have a mutual TLS access to a database, for example. You needed a username and password. You needed some sort of credentials. What's happening here is like without any credentials, just by, um, just by a workload declaring that it needs an ISVED to be able to access some services or actually to identify itself, then it will identify itself. And then you have a policy somewhere to say, please trust this workload to access me or interact with me. And that's exactly what's happening here. And that's what Cert Manager is trying to help with. There are a few things, and let me try if this works. Can you see that? So Cert Manager is the main, is the main uh, project, and it's a bunch of projects within the project, if you will. Uh, the very first one is focusing on issuing certificates, renewing certificates, using multiple issuers against any um, CA, like Let's Encrypt, or Cloudflare, or DigiCert, or Intrust. Anyone using other CAs? Popular CAs, yeah. So the next one is um, CSI driver spiffy. So in a container environment, um, one of the ways you can, con you can provide a workload um, by, by any uh, secret is using a volume. So you provision a volume in memory, make it available for a workload, and then the workload reads it. And what happens, you can actually also swap these things automatically if you wish. So this is a very secure and no, fr uh, and no friction approach to distributing um, secrets to a workload of choice. Everybody following? Especially people with no Kubernetes, you're following what's happening, right? So I have a workload deployed to Kubernetes. This workload needs to consume a secret. What's, there are multiple approaches to consume a secret. What is a Kubernetes native way to consume a secret is by somebody making it available on a volume that gets loaded to my context or my operating system automatically. And that's what Cert Manager is doing. It has a CSI driver. CSI is basically container storage integration or interface. So it's integrating with the storage, which in this case, the private memory of the machine, injecting the certificate there, which is a ISVED, and making it available to the workload. So workload, just by coming online, it has an ISVED that says, this is who I am, it's verifiable, and then everybody else can trust me within a trust domain. And if I federate trust domains together, then I will also be verifiable across trust domains. And that's the beauty of that. Once it works, it's very simple and it scales pretty well. There is also trust root. And basically what trust root component out of the cert manager is doing, it can have all these trust bundles automatically packaged and distributed across your domains. Because Kubernetes, for example, run on VMs. I want all the VMs to trust my, my CAs or other CAs that I use to, to trust me. Um, or across trust domains, you probably have some CAs, other trust domain CAs that verified me to be included in your trust bundles. Make sense? Yeah. OK, so basically, that's exactly what I just tried to explain. Um, Cert Manager, was, which is the project, plus the extension, which is CSI's driver, um, is basically um, helping us delivering spiffy isvids, which is basically their driving license. It's an attested, a verifiable document um, in the form of X509, uh, because that's, there is a lot of infrastructure already in organizations to, to, to deal with this style. Jots are there, but I mean, jots are quite new to, to many infrastructure or, um, in organizations, if you will. And basically, what Cert Manager plus CSS driver is doing is exactly realizing that, it injecting this into, the, into, the, into a volume. And what it does, it continuously um, renew these um, IDs as well. OK? So if you want very short-lived, and for example, Google just like changed everything to be 90 days or 30 days. You know, Google changed their... So things in the past were like any certificate usually lasted for a year, for example, or even like 30 years sometimes. And now you can see a lot of six months or three months was Let's Encrypt, for example. And I think Google is going down to one month or 30 days. And we see a lot of other short-lived um, 
like IDs as well. So you always need this ability to issue and renew in an automated way rather than having outages. And these outages might be, outages is like is, is a fact of life, correct? Yeah. So that's exactly what it's helping. The next one is also adding the trust manager component. And what it helps is giving us the ability to distribute these trust bundles across trust domains. So it becomes automatic as well. We just like need to define that. It's already part of the spec. So that's already declared and then it becomes, it, it, it's added as well. So if I use an example flow, and I've tried to do that in a few minutes because I broke the demo, but basically you will, you will get it with me. Um, what's happening here is I have a Kubernetes environment and Kubernetes basically is an orchestrator that runs across multiple nodes and nodes here is virtual machines or servers. Yeah. And as part of this environment, I have Cert Manager, which is the main component here, alongside the CSS driver Spiffy, which is basically the one that generates the documents and injects them for us for workloads to consume. All what happens is people, or like a developer or a platform engineer, defines this YAML, or like basically as a code policy, and says, I need to access Spiffy certs Please make them available in this directory, var run secret spiffy.io. And the way to generate these is basically using a driver called spiffy.csi cert manager. So it goes automatically, generates the SVED or issues the SVED, verify it, inject it into the volume, and all the workload from an application perspective, all it needs to do is just to read the secret from this path. This path does not exist on a volume physically. It's in a memory, um, virtual, in the virtual memory, basically. So it's very secure from that perspective. And that's not only done once, it gets renewed. I'm just repeating that because that's one of the main problems that uh, exists. So pod, it, pod basically is an instance of an application. It goes to a node, a virtual machine. Um, Kubernetes gets aware of, I mean, somebody is actually declaring this. So I need to move. I generate a certificate request, a CSR, to my CA. And then um, the CSR is approved. That can also be automated, by the way. So based on some criteria, you can automatically approve. You don't, if you don't want um, some human approval from your CA, for example, you can automate the approvals as well. So you don't have to be held up anywhere from that sense. So if you're always doing particular um, duration or CN or stuff like that, it will all be approved if you want to. Certificate is reconciled, certificate is ready, it's made available, it's signed the certificate as well, um, and injected using the trust manager bundle right into the node. And then what happens is CS driver in Kubernetes is always continuously monitoring what's happening. So once it um, expires, it will renew it, actually prior to the expiration. If this workload gets evicted or deleted or undeployed, it also deletes the secrets. So it always cleans up after it. So we're making sure the, from a security perspective that's always um, as less exposed as possible. Yeah, so basically that's on the, the pod termination. And that's the end of my talk. Hopefully. <laughs>